Hi everyone, thanks for join, joining us uh, to talk about uh, Delta firmware updates over the year uh, in Zephyr. So um, we have 10 minutes, uh, let's go to Chase, <laughs> challenge accepted. Uh, we are working for uh, Kickmaker, uh, high tech design agency and industrialization partner to make embedded devices. So today I am with uh, Clovis Cord. Hi, I'm uh, Clovis Cord, embedded software engineer at Kickmaker, and uh, I've been working on Zephyr projects for one year and a half now, and I've developed uh, Delta IPA with the help of uh, Roman. And I'm Roman Pelta, I'm a software engineer too, uh, on uh, Zephyr uh, Arthos for several years, and uh, Linux stuff uh, too. So uh, the first, uh, the f first of all, we have to, to get the context of why we are uh, making a device firmware update, but I, I, I know that you are already convinced about this uh, kind of feature. But uh, well, a lot of um, uh, incoming regulatories uh, like uh, Cyber Resilience Act, uh, for example, and we have to fix vulnerabilities. Uh, we are introducing bugs, uh, so we have to fix them. Uh, and uh, firmware updates is the opportunity to uh, improve the time to market, to maybe postpone some features uh, to launch a product uh, as soon as possible. So, but the main drawbacks, uh, when we have a constrained bandwidth, when we have a constrained power consumption, and the transfer costs, for example, LoRa, LoRa1, public or uh, public network, for example. So we are only focused on the uh, MCU targets. Uh, and we see that the uh, easiest way uh, to decrease or to, to make it possible is uh, decreasing uh, the update size. So maybe make uh, a delta. Uh, most of our state-of-the-art uh, delta algorithm is based on a, a bachelor thesis from Linea Lint. And I think she's present uh, today. So, hello to, uh, to Linnea. And uh, now I will uh, left, uh, leave Clovis uh, to explain the Delta. Okay, so let's dive into technical details. So, I think you're all familiar with uh, FOTA, firmware over the year, where you uh, download the full uh, new firmware to update your device. Here, with the Delta update, you only download the patch, uh, a patch. So, there's a few more steps for Delta updates. The first one is to obviously generate the patch. So for that, we've developed uh, a Python script, BSDFHS, which is based on BSD for the, uh, for the differential algorithm and on ensuring for a compression uh, algorithm. We'll discuss it uh, later. Um, so we are generating the patch and uh, you can see if there's, uh, for example, three different blocks, uh, the patch will contain a different instruction about uh, adding some uh, bytes, uh, copy some bytes, and uh, skipping uh, some spart. Uh, once we downloaded the patch, we can uh, apply it. Uh, we chose the strategy AB, uh, as it was mentioned on the last uh, presentation, uh, for a security reason, because we want uh, our device to be able to uh, roll back in case of uh, bad uh, updates, corrected uh, updates. And uh, how the Delta updates work, uh, basically just uh, reading the current firmware data and the data in the patch, and it combines the two data. And uh, with that, we are able to recreate the new firmware. And uh, once the new firmware is uh, written on the slot B, we can also use uh, MCU boot to update uh, our device. So let's talk about the choices we made. Um, about the Delta algorithm, so the differential algorithm, we decided, we made uh, some researches and we saw that uh, BSDF was uh, really uh, efficient, uh, especially with, uh, when dealing with, uh, with uh, binary um, differences. But the main problem was um, the default implementation of BSDF is using uh, BZIP2 uh, compression. And uh, this compression uses a lot of, um, of uh, memory. Uh, and uh, because we're working on embedded devices, our main uh, focus is uh, the memory footprint, uh, a low memory footprint. So that's why we developed um, BSDIF. So for only the Delta API, you can see that it takes uh, around uh, 4,000 kilobytes uh, for uh, the API. And then for uh, the compression algorithm, uh, HRing for the decoder parts, it takes uh, 800 bytes of flash. And uh, about the RAM, you can configure it from uh, 50 bytes to 50,000 bytes. Um, and so, yeah, as I said, uh, we uh, focused on low memory footprint uh, over uh, decompression uh, speed. Uh, let's talk about the results we had with uh, this API. So, for example, I built uh, the Hello World uh, sample uh, from uh, Zephyr. 
um, which uh, has a size of uh, 20,000 bytes. And I just uh, changed the software to print uh, Hello Vienna instead. Um, and uh, you can see that uh, we have as a result a patch size of uh, 191 bytes. So we only have to download uh, uh, 191 bytes instead of the 20,000 bytes of the, of the software. Um, you can say that uh, it's a small uh, difference, so that's why we have a so small uh, patch. Uh, so I built two different uh, samples, the philosophical one and the synchronization one. And also we have a result about uh, 40, uh, we only download uh, 3,000 bytes instead of the 20,000 bytes uh, of the full um, binary. Uh, so now let's go with uh, demo. So we can see, well, uh, at the beginning, it's printing a source. So it's a source firmware that is running, and we are sending the patch over UART uh, with block of uh, 125 bytes. And uh, once the patch uh, is uh, received, we can uh, initialize the Delta API and then uh, call the BSDF algorithm and the each shrink uh, decompression to decompress uh, each block that we are receiving. And uh, once it's done, uh, we can reboot uh, by calling, uh, by calling uh, MC Reboot API. And when the device is uh, rebooting, uh, it's uh, now printing a target, uh, which means uh, we are executing the, the new firmware. And the update was uh, successful. Uh, so we developed uh, the API uh, at Kickmaker. And for the needs of uh, one of our customers, we uh, deployed it. And so now there are um, about uh, 50 devices that are deployed uh, uh, to run, uh, which is uh, next to Lyon, where we are based in France. And um, the, the devices are using uh, LoRa connectivity, and they are running for now six months, and uh, they are updating uh, regularly, and it's working uh, great. But uh, there's still uh, limitations to our, our API. Uh, the first one could be with uh, encrypted firmware updates, uh, firmware, just. Uh, it will be harder to handle. We didn't focus on that uh, topic. We only focused on signed uh, firmware. Uh, also, you will uh, need to be really careful about uh, f uh, firmware version control, uh, because uh, if your device is running uh, a patch from, uh, for example, 1.2.2, uh, can only uh, um, be running from a 1.2.2 uh, device. Uh, there's also limitation when, uh, for example, there's too many changes in your software. It could lead to inefficient uh, patch size. Um, and uh, for that, uh, there's a three solution. Uh, you can still do a FOTA, the classic way, or you can do sequential uh, defota, incremental uh, uh, defota, uh, or uh, your uh, cloud backend can handle um, uh, this problem. Um, so the point of uh, our solution was uh, obviously to show you the, the IPA we developed, but uh, it's uh, more that uh, we need you as a reviewers. So we have uh, three different uh, GitHub repositories. The first one is uh, for the patch generation, the Python script, BSD flashes. And the second one uh, repository is um, to add uh, HRink as an extended module to Zephyr. And the last one is uh, Delta, Delta IPA uh, itself. So, thanks for listening. If you have any question.